Gal Zethmar with the Z Files on the road. We're at the Crestview Fire Department, station number one. And this wasn't always station number one, because station number one was probably several other places in the past, and we're going to learn some of that history. I'm here with Fire Chief Joe Trailer. Joe, I guess this may be our last big, long interview with you, because the, the, the word on the street is you're going to make your second official retirement in your careers. That's correct. Uh, 30th of April will be my last uh, official day as Fire Chief of the City of Crestview. And like many people, you were among those who found your way somehow through your military career to Eglin Air Force Base, and it seems that a lot of people who get there, or Hurlbut, or Duke, and now seven Special Forces, they tend to want to hang around here afterwards. Well, actually, a, my first duty assignment in 1965 was Eglin Air Force Base. I came here as right out of basic training to be a firefighter. I stayed until the spring of 1968, left to go to my first tour in Vietnam, came back to uh, the United States and was stationed in Texas. And 28 years later, I wound up back at Eglin as a chief mass sergeant and decided to retire. And the job in Crestview became open. I applied for it and was selected, retired as the deputy chief of Eglin Air Force Base to take the fire chief's job here in Crestview. Who was the mayor that you applied to and who Ted was Mathis. Ted Mathis? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. uh, lieutenant Commander Ted Mathis. Okay. <laughs> uh, he was actually a uh, lieutenant commander in the Navy Seabees, I believe, okay. and had worked civil service uh, on Eglin as an engineer. Okay. Now, some people start out as kids wanting to be a fireman, wanting to be a policeman, wanting to be a soldier, whatever. Uh, when did the idea of being a fireman actually come into your thoughts in your lifetime? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, I went to college for a while to be a uh, wildlife management. That was my degree program. Uh, Louisiana Tech and I agreed that I probably wasn't cut out for college at that time. Uh, I like to party more than I like to go to school. How old were so, you then, probably? Uh, 18, 19. Okay. You know, my first time away from home. Oh, uh, so I went into the Air Force because the only class that I went to consistently was Air Force ROTC. Okay. So I went into the Air Force, went through basic training, and when you get ready to leave basic training, they tell you this is what your career field is going to be. I had actually applied to become a aircraft mechanic, jet engine mechanic. I had a cousin who worked for Delta Airlines, and he made good money, and, and it was a stable career. And I said, great, that's what I want to do. And they said, no, you're going to be a fireman. <laughs> and I said, hmm, I don't have any choice in this. So I, I left basic at Lackland, came to Eglin, uh, discovered that I really loved what they had asked me to do and never regretted uh, the decision to enlist and to stay in. Mm -hmm. Actually, I had to extend my enlistment to take my first uh, tour to Vietnam. I got to Vietnam and realized this is what being in the service is all about, and I re-enlisted the first time at Da Nang Air Base, Republic of Vietnam. Okay. So now as a fireman in the Air Force in Vietnam, uh, were you having to also be carrying armament at that time to protect yourselves? Well, every morning when we, wherever you went, you carried your helmet and your flak vest. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the fire station, we actually had an armory where our guns were secure. Okay. So if we had to get to them, we could. Okay. But basically, you would have been doing fire protection for the base operations. Yes, okay. yes. We, uh, we did... The same thing there that we do here, or they do at Eglin Air Force Base, we supported flight operations, building fires, uh, people got hurt. We do the same thing that any fire department in the United States does. So then how many total years did you do as a fire person for the Air Force? Twenty-eight and a half years. That's a bit more than the normal 20. Well, I, I was lucky enough to get promoted have some really great assignments. Uh, I spent 
two years in Vietnam, six months in Guam supporting flight operations in Vietnam, uh, four years in Spain, uh, 15 months in Portugal, uh, Oregon, Arizona, California, twice in Florida, Texas. Uh, so it's been a great career. And then in Crestry, how many years are you going to have here? 23 years, 10 months, and two days. <laughs> okay. Not that I'm counting. <laughs> Chief Trader explains some of the memorabilia on display in the lobby area of the Crestview Fire Department this, this Station. This by the son of one of our former employees who was actually depo deployed there while his father worked here. Uh, this is the traditional speaking trumpet trumpet uh, the symbol of authority uh, if you look at the collar brass on all of the uh, fire department uniforms there are a number of speaking trumpets the chief wears five speaking trumpets normally referred to as bugles and that is the most in any department now the rank goes down from there so rather than stars like military, you have the trumpets. They use the trumpets because it's the, the traditional symbol of the authority on the far ground was the guy with the speaking trumpet. He was given the commands. Okay. All, so right. all the flags, this one was by the son of a member that was deployed. The other two were given to us by members who actually deployed uh, in support of the National Security of America to various locations. Okay. And then uh, just kind of our uh, display room. Uh, of course, we all were here during 9-11. We had the memorial book, uh, tribute book from 9-11 on display. And under that, we have the National Fallen Firefighters uh, book, uh, the helmet on the shelf up there is from our sister city, it was a gift from the fire chief of our sister city to this department, and we then sent back to him the traditional white leather helmet, uh, presentation helmet so that they could display that uh, there. The white leather helmet on display here was actually uh, the presentation helmet uh, that I received when I retired out of the United States Air Force. So you'll take that with you? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I, that's going with me, yeah. So when you came to Crestview, what was the fire department? Where was it at? What equipment What did it have at that time? And what year was that? Uh, June 28th of 1993. Okay. The fire station, the only fire station, was located in the west end of the current city hall. Where those garage doors are. Where the garage doors are. That was actually the truck base. Uh, what is now administrative services was the fire station. And... <clears throat> We had a total of 14 firefighters, including the chief, deputy chief, uh, and the fire prevention guy. Uh, we ran three shifts. We averaged having two people on duty at a time because of vacation, sick days, and that kind of thing. And not only did we have the confines of the city of Crestview at that time, but up until 1997, we had a contractual arrangement with North Okaloosa Fire District. We covered all of the fire district and the city with that same 14 people. Okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> you worked hard. We, we did. We put in a lot of long hours. In fact, a lot of my guys that are still here, and there's not many of them still left. A lot of them have retired. Uh, we were talking the other day that they actually made more money in overtime because we had so many calls at that time that we always were calling people back in for coverage they made more money in overtime than they made in their regular hourly uh, week but when i got here an entry-level firefighter was making five dollars and 25 cents an hour that's not a lot of money no no in fact i had the the pay plan from 1970, 
I want to say it was 72, the paycheck, weekly paycheck for a captain, a shift, a guy that ran the shift, was something like $250 a week. That's what they got paid. And yet that was still a long way from the early days. Um, some of the old timers I've talked to in our history stuff, at one point when the sewing factory was built and the city hall was technically in that big 40,000 square foot building in that corner where that one little brown right. door is, that there were two different whistles on the roof, one for fire, one for police. Yep. And it depended whether it tooted one, two, three, or four times yep. for the volunteers to know where to go find the chief and his truck yep. <laughs> and what yep. corner of the city they were in. Yep. Uh, actually, the city started off with uh, one firefighter who doubled as the jailer. Yeah. And then they, ordered, they, bought another, they hired another firefighter who was the relief jailer. <laughs> So it's it's been this department has been active s about 78 years okay. it's serving the city of Crestview and of course the city has grown especially the spurt that began by, from about 1990 forward really when the yeah. when the growth of building began now it's now what's called PJ Adams area and uh, I tell some people Crestview will continue growing in spite of itself. Yes. Well, it has been amazing uh, to watch the growth. Uh, when I came here, there was no fire station south of the interstate. Of course, about 25% of our population at that time in the 93, because of the Adams uh, developments down there, about 25% of our population actually lived south of the interstate. In 1997, the insurance service organization who actually is responsible for developing our home re uh, homeowners insurance and business insurance uh, notified us that they were coming for a visit. And in preparation for that visit, we, re we obviously were looking at their criteria and one of the things that we had to do was to have a fire station down there. We couldn't afford the insurance, to be honest with you. Yeah. We went to the city council and they said, okay, we'll give you enough people. Where are you going to put the building? We didn't have a building. We went to the school board and there was a fire in one of the portable buildings that used to be in, in the schools around here. One of the portable buildings was burned out. The school board donated that to us. We moved it down to at the corner of um, Ashley Drive, the first the okay. first Villa Crest, right. and we sat it up there and built a pole barn. The firefighters did this, renovated the building, and made that a fire station in time for the ISO to come and grade the city of Crestview. And we reduced the insurance rating. Instead of it going up, it went down. And that building existed as a temporarily fire station uh, the morning of 9-11-01 we were in that building when the first aircraft hit the World Trade Center uh, ab about two years later we finally opened a permanent structure on PJ Adams so it's it's been an interesting time and then at some point you, this building was built and you were sharing both space in this building with the police department and both of your dispatches and everything. Yeah, at one time, uh, this was actually built to be a joint public safety building. Uh, they, they had run out of room in City Hall and they actually need the space over there to consolidate some of the functions in City Hall because they were growing too. They built this building uh, the building was split vertically down the middle. Uh, the east side was fire, the west side was police. Uh, and we had a joint communication center. Yeah. The, the room the communication center was in was probably big enough for one department or the other, but not both. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and so we, we soon became overcrowded. Uh, but that was the best we could do at the time for the money we had and, and a lot of other factors. The police department grew faster than the fire department did because they were as far or further behind in staffing that we were. 
And so as they began to add people, they they ran out of space over here. So they started looking for additional space. And Warriors Hall, which was a, actually a church facility at that time, was procured to move the police department there. And so when they relocated, we were able to expand and have the full facility. And it, it's worked out very well for us. And then you built the third station over by the hospital. We built the third station behind the hospital because if you look at the Redstone East extension, mm -hmm. the goal is to have a emergency vehicle reach your, your home or your place of business within five minutes. That's our goal for delivery of service, within five minutes. Uh, there's a mileage thing that says perfectly ideal world, no fire station should be further than a mile and a half away from your home. Uh, so sometimes that's not physically realistic. You just can't do that. It, the cost of operating plus benefits served. So we use the five minute response time. So we put that one there because the Redstone East extension and the school that they put out there at the end of Redstone, two there's two schools out there. Plus you have uh, a large uh, single family home new development out there and more, to come. and more to come. So we position that. That also gives us better coverage for the corridor along the interstate for the commercial development that was projected to come along next to Lowe's and out in that area. And I believe sooner or later it will come. Something will happen. But yeah. now we've um, got finally some growth as the south end of the town is becoming just like what Fort Walton, Niceville, Val are. Not, not, that's Niceville. Not much more land to build on, so they're going to the north. Yep. And we've got two new commercial sections up there right up around the high school. And then there is growth growing out, out on the edges. And there's still some land within the city limits along Old Bethel that is zoned waiting for the time to happen that well, there's, buildings will pop up there. Well, there's actually, between the Winn-Dixie intersection there at uh, 85 and Old Bethel, all the way around to the Old Bethel Cemetery, just mm -hmm. that corridor, there are about 1,500 living units that, can be, that have been proposed to be built in that corridor. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at two and a half people per living unit, and, and that's probably a low number, you're looking at seven, eight thousand people sure. th just moving into that corridor. Uh, forward thinking, the city council did allow us to purchase uh, three acres of land uh, about almost halfway around between 85 and 90, uh, to so that when the population does expand like we think it's going to because once the commercial development shows a little more growth, more visible what they're doing, mm -hmm. then that area is going to become very desirable for living because you got you got shopping choices right there. You don't have to drive to Fort Walton. You don't have to go close to the interstate. You can shop where you live, and everybody's going to like that. you got a new restaurants. Um, there's rumors that there's going to be a, another big, uh, some type of Walmart mm -hmm. up in that general area. Mm -hmm. So I would expect somewhere around four to five to 6,000 potential new residents living just in that corridor. And that would jump our population from somewhere around 24,000 to about 30,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, that station that we're proposing on the north end would ensure that all of our residents still have that service within that five minute uh, response time. Well in all of the years you've been with the Crestview Fire Department, uh, I think we pretty well have mentioned what would be the major accomplishments you've had. How about disappointments? Is there any couple of things you can think of that you really wanted to get? I'm, in my mind I think of one, but I want to see what you feel the things you really felt should have happened and haven't yet happened, but somebody it still could maybe in the future you wish the next chief, hey, something put in your to-do list. Well, in every position, is regardless if you were there five years or 35 years, there's always going to be something that you wish you could have accomplished. 
Um, as, as you're aware, we just got uh, purchased a new communications, radio communications for the entire city, which is going to be a, a, will set us good for the next 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, our staffing uh, and our criteria for development and supported development is in place. Is there anything that I wish we could have done better or different? Hmm. There's always things you could wish you could have done better. Financing concept with some other places well, adopted you Yeah, uh, I had proposed that we do the fire assessment uh, fee, which basically takes the fire department out of the Avlorum tax hunt. It's a dedicated funding that is can only be used by the fire department to run the fire department and to keep pace with development. We made our case before the city council. The city council said, we understand what you're saying, chief, but we don't feel that's the way we want to go. I saluted smartly and said, I appreciate that, but I'll bring it back. Well, of course, and I did. <laughs> and of course, the reality is that Crestview, like every other major city or any city has, there's a certain amount of your property that gets the service, but pays little or no property tax and then Crestview with older type of housing and the value and, and all the exemptions that are now available and some people who get them deserve those but it does result in uh, some of the people who get the service don't really contribute anything to get that well let us say that they they probably pay less than their day neighbor may be paying mm -hmm. okay uh, and again, I support our political process. Uh, we made a, a, what I thought was a strong case. Uh, the council made a decision. I, I think the council is open and willing to have those issues readdressed at some point. Um, there is a trend, and the thing that I think kind of got lost in the translation was that if you take the Crestview Fire Department out of the Avalorum tax hunt and you establish them as a separate entity over here for funding, what that does is it frees up X number of million dollars of Avalorum income that can be used to do the things the citizens of Crestview have been wanting to have done streets improvements, uh, park upgrades, all those kinds of things that right now are harder to do because we're sharing that Avlorum uh, income. The, the concern was that those people that do have the exemptions and are not paying taxes right now, uh, Avlorum rate taxes uh, on all of their property value would still be required to pay whatever the the fee rate was mm -hmm. and that it would have a negative impact on the elderly and low income and those kinds of thing, uh, uh, people though there was a process in place for people that had hardships mm -hmm. that would be able to address it uh, mariana is an example uses this mm -hmm. process uh, tallahassee uh, uses this process. It's used throughout the state of Florida. Uh, I have heard no negative comments from any of the elected officials from any of those jurisdictions that I talked to. But again, here in Crestview, our duly elected officials decided to go another way, and I support them yeah. as they have supported me. They didn't agree with me, and they have a right to do that. If I didn't agree with them, I have a right to do that, but I also have an obligation to support my officials because I want them to support me. Right. But they did get you two new fire trucks. Yes, sir. Or will they be here before you retire? Uh, we should get, those should actually be delivered to us by the middle of March. Okay, well, great. Yeah. Now, the final thing here for the last four or five minutes, what's Joe Trader gonna be doing after that retirement day? I think you've got some 
Do you have this other two-wheel motor, motor, this nice motorcycle you get around on as a fun thing? Yeah. So where all is that going to take you and your bride? Well, uh, the 3rd of May, we're going to go to Panama City, and we're going to the Thunder Beach Motorcycle Rally, and we're going to spend the weekend over there. And then my wife uh, wants to go down to Cedar Key mm -hmm. on the bike, and uh, we're just going to enjoy life. Uh, it's she's followed me around the world for the last 52 years, and put up with missed Christmases and birthdays and uh, being gone for months at a time. Uh, my last 10 years in the Air Force, I stayed TDY constantly. I traveled uh, all over the United States uh, conducting evaluations of readiness for a fire department to be able to deploy and fight a war overseas. Uh, while it was a great opportunity for me uh, professionally, it did, my wife then had to take up the burden like all military wives do of the family issues and she says, you pull out of the driveway, the dog gets sick, the kid gets sick, and the car breaks. <laughs> yeah, I, and it, you know the the washing machine quits, and uh, so it, it, she's been my rock for all these years. And uh, you know, if a woman's an angel, she's got to be it because it seems to be that you know I me always being gone, I I get a phone call, you know what about such and such, and and I'd say, honey, I'm in the, she says, I got it. I never had to worry about my family because she was always there and was taken care of. Well, now you get to enjoy what you've done here, and two careers and uh, two retirements to, to, to keep you running, and so now you can get out and enjoy that at Harley. Well, it, at my age, uh, actually, it, it worked out, and it was no super planning on my part. I retired from the military, got this position, uh, fixing to retire from here and I stuck around long enough to be able to draw full social security also yeah. and uh, so between that my wife's on social security now uh, our we'll be able to live comfortably yeah. uh, we're not going to buy a yacht we're not going to fly around the world uh, the truth of the matter is we've been around the world uh, some places folks weren't happy to see us and some places they were uh, but that's life, and that makes us who we are. Got to be some trips to to the Dakota sometime. Uh, <clears throat> we actually, she wants to go to Alaska. She's okay. always wanted to do the Alaska cruise, and I told her that after I retire uh, in this in the fall, uh, we'll do that. Uh, she's entitled to that. Uh, Great. She's put up with me for a lot of years. Great. Joe Trader, congratulations thank you, and thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, I appreciate y'all. And so for the next Christmas parade, we'll have somebody else leading the troops, but they will be done. That's That's, right. that's what government does. Yep. And that's this edition of the Z-Files with Fire Chief Joe Trailer.